They were here before by Corinne Samuels, Chapter 1, Shani. Shani has always been both amazed and amused by people who claim to hate more names. Really, how could anyone possibly hate more names? when mornings are the very best part of any day. Well, for her, it always was and still is. It is always a time when she got to check herself and do her care routine, not just the usual shower, brush teeth, etc. It is a time when she is able to unobtrusively check her aura. She discovered a while back that she is an empath, and being an empath has not been an easy journey for her. This means that she is as sensitive to emotions as a vampire is to light. Shani has had to learn how to decipher energy. She has had to learn how to decode emotions. This literally means intentionally determining which emotions belong to her and which belong to the people around her. Invariably, this act of decoding sometimes leaves her drained. So early each morning, she checks her mental state analyze everything that is going on in her head and in her heart to be able to filter emotions as she goes through the day. Also of necessity, she has had to have a handle on the people around her as well. Therefore, she does not make friends easily. It is hard enough with the few friends she already has in that she always knows how and what they are feeling. However, the why is often problematic. Clearly, both a blessing and a curse to always be in touch with another person's burden. Some days, it is as if she is executing Hercules' 12 labors all at once. However, she has learned to carry this load well. Lately, she almost never goes out on dates. She never meets up with anyone for coffee, ever. Anytime she meets up with the few friends that she has is always in a controlled environment. Well, actually, there was that one time when she had gone to the Red Lobster on West 125th Street. That, however, was a long time ago when she had just moved from rural North Carolina, where the Great Smoky Mountains kiss the skyline and are always visible from almost every direction. The Great Smoky has framed her existence, and it is a most picturesque backdrop to a laid-back existence. Gazing out at the mountain range always gave her a sense of being grounded, cementing her existence in a sometime hostile world, along with a deep-seated tranquility that she told herself she would never encounter anywhere else. A load would instantly leave her shoulders and the tightness in her neck would ease just from making eye contact with the great mountain. It does not matter what is going on in her life. Mountains, not just mountains, but trees, bodies of water, nature in general is always a bomb for her, a natural escape from, a real, from real life issues. If she were to ever experience a bad day, a day where she was grossly overwhelmed by the emotions of others or her own, all she had to do was literally look to the hills and help would come by way of sweet peace. This way of being has always defined her existence and as a child she convinced herself that there was a fairy in those wide open fields hiding in trees floating around in bodies of water who has just one job, and that is to soothe her delicate emotions. Shani even named her Rua. To this day, she doesn't even know what that word means, but one day it just came to her like a gift, so she kept it. Shani moved to New York six years ago for a huge job opportunity to work at an advertising media company. It has been a dream come true working with some of the most creative and talented people all over the, from all over the world. Going to work is like being a part of the UN, as each person on staff has been handpicked by a mysterious exec who values diversity above all else. She did not much care how or why she was selected. 
Whether or not it was tokenism, the important thing is that she is here, sitting at tables in rooms she could not even begin to imagine. Of course, she had done some work in media at a local station in Charlotte as a behind-the-scenes crew member. While working at the news station, she had, she had to commute every day, which was never pleasant. In retrospect, that was quite possibly the reason she had agreed to move to New York. Little did she know at the time that New York City traffic is in a different league altogether. This type of traffic is not just vehicular, but there is also people traffic and sometimes pet traffic as well. That type of traffic is enough to destabilize all her seven chakras for days. Just too many angry people who are always in a hurry, so they will step on or over you. They will push you down, but whichever way, they will get to their destination. Eventually, like so many others before her, she discovered that having a car in the Big Apple was a pointless luxury that she could gladly do without thanks to the many and various Uber drivers. She grew up in a tiny suburb of Gaston County called Mac McAdenville, where things rarely changed and everyone knows everyone and nothing was private or sacred. For that exact reason and the fact that she felt like she was stifling, had to leave, she had to leave her small town. However, after she left her small town, she became aware that based on her genetic constitution, New York was probably not the most ideal setting for her, but by then it was too late to do anything about it. She often chastised herself for leaving peace and tranquility to live in a concrete jungle from her little apartment in the city. As far as the eyes could see, all that exists is just concrete some wood and fiberglass, but mostly concrete. The reality is, although she felt stifled in her small town, metaphorically, she came to observe that she could literally stifle to death from all the fumes in New York, not a lick of fresh air to be found anywhere. Why hadn't she done her research about living here? Why didn't anyone warn her? Every day she leaves her apartment is a frantic endeavor, a mad dash to be indoors away from the maddening crowds. She always felt like she was losing her breath. Then she would become painfully aware that she had been holding her breath for a while. The other issue is that she would leave her apartment every morning excited for all the possibilities and opportunities that a new day would bring. But by the time she returned home, she would be fighting a full-blown panic attack. How could she continue to live this way? This question was constantly on her mind and also why. But as humanity has done for centuries, Shani adjusted, adapted, assimilated and eventually evolved until she was vibing at a level that was more conducive to her delicate constitution. She learned to navigate her new world through various calming apps and about a million nature-rich images on her phone. She even got a few plants for her office and home. Also, because everything that sustains her is on her phone, she could constantly and consistently be found there. Her phone became her best friend and confidant, her happy place. Far worse than crowded streets, the bane of her existence is a subway, which she has to take at least twice a week round trip. She always had to brace herself for the violent onslaught of human emotions. Everything from extreme fear, pain, panic, anxiety, to full-blown rage and confusion. So many people are confused these days. Yes, she's, the struggle is quite real for her. On those subway days, when she got home, it took her a lot longer to coax some amount of zen back in her world. And she would always wonder, 
How the hell did I get through today? Somehow, she always made it through each demanding day, Monday to Friday, and then she would hit the repeat button. Indeed, she started to believe that a greater entity than her fairy was looking out for her. Of course, she couldn't be entirely sure of what that entity is, but it was comforting to know of such an existence in her world. Although she grew up attending Sunday school and taking part in other church activities, however, as the pressures of life became more intense, she attended church less and less until eventually church and everything it entails became a distant memory. Also, when it comes to the issue of whether or not she believes in God, along with her political ideology, those are topics she prefers not to address. After all, it is no one's business what or whom she chooses to accept. Plus, those issues never came up with her very small circle of friends. Why bother to make things way more complicated than they need to be? She has learned that the quickest, the most reliable, and certainly the most efficient way to rid yourself of friends is to discuss religion and politics. Obviously, her job entails discussing some amount of politics. As, she's, as the saying goes, the personal certainly is the political. But why would she take work home with her and spread it around her circle of friends? So yes, the jury is still out in terms of her religious dogma, but she still likes to keep that door open by praying as often as she remembers. Also, she has made meditation a part of her regular care routine as she believes that meditating centers her, clears her mind, and embodies a strong sense of catharsism. This morning, being no different, she has been up since five and she always opens her windows as well to get a whiff of the crisp morning breeze, which seems quite fresh despite the setting, especially in the winter time. The winters are also problematic for Shani, coming from a place with mild winters, little to no snow, to a place where they can get up to five feet of snow. However, this morning as she opened her window, she seems to have let in some very unsettling energy. But at this point, she is not concerned because this sometimes happens. When she opens the window, nothing that a few moments of meditation couldn't chase away. Shani launches into her meditation routine. At first, just focusing on her blessings, then her most favorite inspirational quotes, and finally her favorite Bible verse, Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. For it is he that give thee the power to get wealth. Wealth for her is not necessarily just money and assets, but good health and blessings. But really, who is she kidding? Why else would she leave serenity to live in chaos? At some point in our journey as humans, the bag becomes an essential part of our blessings. Unfortunately, this morning, none of those things helped to settle her, to ground her. Next, she turned to yoga, but a few rounds of downward dog poses were proving in inadequate to get her out of her feelings and out of her head. Deflated, she showered and headed out to work, as the busyness and routines of the day sometimes helped to distract her from her rumination.